welcome to everyone joining here today. Wherever you are and whatever the time of day it is, I hope that you are keeping safe in these challenging times. These are murky days in more ways than one. But as I look out of the window this morning, there is just a glimmer of sunshine. I hope a sign of things to come. But as we become more and more restricted, I am so glad that we can be together in some small way as we come together in one spirit. Let's begin today by saying the collect together. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan you revealed Jesus Christ as your Son. May we recognise him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. None of us, I don't think, would disagree that 2020 was an incredibly hard year. And it feels that 2021 has started off no better. In fact, some have said that it feels worse. At school, we have certainly said that the stress of this lockdown feels far greater than it did back last March. Three years ago, the school where I work began a massive period of change. It was not through choice, I might add, but we embraced the change and we worked with it. It has involved disruption and building work on a huge scale and is now transforming itself from a small single form primary school to one that is double its size. My little department moved into its space at Easter two years ago. It is the best space I have ever taught in. But it was only when we were looking back this last week that we realised that since moving in we have never taught for a full academic year with the same cohort of children in the new building. Who knows when we will see some kind of normality and a full year's teaching in what by then will be old rather than new. As a staff, it is what we all hope for. For me, I hope that will happen before I finally retire. Hope is a word we are using more and more in the context of our lives at the moment. In the not so distant past, we might have hoped for a nice holiday, a new job, or maybe to change the car. Now our hope is for an end to this pandemic, our hope to be vaccinated, and just to be able to see and hold those we love in a physical sense. In that sense, we are all united. During January, Stephen Cottrell, the Archbishop of York, is sharing short reflections on the theme, Our Hope is Found. There may be something that you will find helpful this month and they can be found on the Archbishop of York's website and his YouTube channel. As I think about hope, I can't say it any better than the Archbishop. And so I am using his words and feel no shame. He says, We all need hope, and I believe that our hope is found in the person of Jesus Christ. Knowing God through him brings life, peace and hope, that no matter what happens, he is with us. As we trust in God and seek to follow him, we can have a peace which is beyond our understanding and a hope that is sure and steadfast for what is to come. The hope that brings peace is something that we could all do with right now, I think. And the song that we're going to listen to now is considered a creedal song. It is actually one of my favourites and was sung at the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby's enthronement. So good choice, Archbishop. 
This song sets out all that holds me firm and grounded in the hope that the Lord Jesus so freely gives. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross, as Jesus died, the says it all. But hope in the worldly sense is about something good for the future and there is somehow a context of uncertainty. We hope for the rain to stop. We hope for something that will bring us something nice and pleasant, a nice holiday. But hope in the biblical context is not just about desiring something good to happen. It expects it to happen and is confident that it will happen. Christian hope is more about wishful thinking. 
Hope sees not just what is, but what can be. It is not blind to the obstacles. It takes them seriously and addresses them practically. At present, that may mean that we cannot be together in the physical sense of being in church. It may mean that we make the difficult decision that, that for now we cannot be within our church family, that we may have to close our church doors. Those decisions are hard, but we hold on to the hope that we have, the true hope in Christ. Paul encouraged the Hebrews to hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Holding on to hope in these challenging times is often hard. I know I had a very hopeless day last Friday. It was entirely professional and a combination of working from home, which doesn't really suit my personality, answering endless emails, some encouraging and some just posing problems, trying to converse via WhatsApp and it's never the same, wondering what on earth I was doing added to this sense of, oh, for goodness sake. That day, I forgot where my hope truly lay. But I was encouraged and spurred on through words of scripture and the prayers of my prayer circle. I was reminded of God's promise to us all, of that hope and future that he plans for us. And amongst everything else, scripture is full of words of hope. The unlikely sign of hope 2000 years ago, the Jesus who was born in a stable, baptised in a river, lived the life of a wanderer and died with criminals, has inspired millions of others to bring hope to the world. There are so many little things that we can do to bring hope. Little things that will make a big difference to someone else. And I know that so many of you are doing so much already. But last Friday made me stop and think how all of us at times just need a little encouragement, a little reminder of our true hope. It made me ask myself, how I can be an inspiration of hope. Let's consider how we might spur one another on. Lessons that we learn for ourselves may be the ones that bring hope for one another. So, if talking helped you, can you provide a listening ear for someone else? If words helped you, can you write a note to someone who is isolated? If prayer helped you, will you tell someone that they are in your prayers? Stephen Cottrell ends his reflections by reminding people that he will pray for them by name when he is asked to. And it's sometimes the hardest thing to do. So, will you ask someone to pray for you? They are questions that I asked myself, and maybe they are questions that you can ask of yourself. In Christ alone, our hope is found. Hold on to that thought as we pray now. In Christ alone, our hope is found. Great and generous God, graciously set your eye today on those who know their need of you, through pain, through trouble, through grief, through their own fault.
nurse the weak, bandage the broken, console the desolate, forgive the penitent and bring hope to their lives. In Christ alone our hope is found. Christ who shared our flesh, graciously set your eye today on those who have no need of you, through pride, through disappointment, through doubt, through false friendship. Soften the hardened heart, confront the arrogant will, uncover hidden depths and the truth that sets us free and brings us hope. Holy Spirit, breath of God, move among us this day. Open us to the wonder of life, that we may recognise an angel in every corner. Open us to the storehouse of your grace and we will be made people of hope and a future for Jesus' sake. Amen. And we bring our prayers together, asking Christ to encourage us and each other to fan the flame of hope in our world. As we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, evermore. Amen. I can't but hope that one day I will get my little office back, and I will not have to clear away Colin's work things and the washing basket before I can talk to you. For until that time, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all this day.